Hey guys, and welcome back to the shop. Man, I've uh, got a pretty cool little uh, thing for you today. Uh, back in the, when I was in Andersonville, and of course the man that taught me was Jay Reeker. And Jay had an entire book of little pieces of hardware that he did. Some of them great sellers, some of them not. Uh, one of the neatest ones, and I, and I sell a few of these, but it's just kind of neat how it's made. And it's also kind of a base uh, for how you build some other pieces that do sell well in the shop, is a doorstop. Nothing terribly fancy. It's literally just a doorstop. Now, um, I have never been a doorstop fan. I kind of see that as kind of a relic from the 1950s. I mean, I don't, I don't know what that really, where that came from, but uh, I remember all old people having doorstops. I, I never knew anybody that was young that had a doorstop, but Jay made a bunch of them, so I'm going to show you how to make one. Uh, the stock that we're going to be using for this is, of course, our old uh, half inch by three sixteenths. Uh, you can also use quarter inch for this. Uh, quarter inch is a little bit beefier. I usually prefer it in something like this. But again, half inch by three sixteenths or quarter is the stock we're going with, and it is cut 13 inches long. Now, the really important thing here is you're going to have to mark this up a little bit. Let me flash over to this picture here. And if you see in this picture, I have call outs on the measurements on this piece. Uh, there's a lot more bending than forging in this. Now if you look, uh, you can see this piece has been marked. And I have marks everywhere there's going to be a bend or a small fold. And these need to be marked with the cutting hardy or on the edge of the anvil because, again, they're going to burn off during the forging process. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, of course, wherever I have a mark, I'm going to put it on the side of the anvil and give it a smack. That way I've got these marks that aren't going to come off. Okay, and there we go. Now the other thing, if you look right here, you can see that we have slit this. Now, as somebody mentioned in the last video, uh, they were quite amused at my comment, if you want a beautiful crotch, you have to use a saw. Well, this is the same situation. If you want a beautiful crotch in this piece, you're going to need to use a saw. Sounds like some kind of freaking horror movie, doesn't it? It's, God, it's so creepy. Anyway, it's the truth. So what we've done is we've slit this, I believe, two and a half inches. And uh, that bandsaw that we've got set up to do that, man, let me tell you, that is, that is a godsend, which is something we'll look at in a later video. But you can chisel this. Uh, just be careful. Uh, it is a long run, so keep it as straight as you want to. You're not going to be really pulling these out into a taper. So if they're a little off, if you've got a little more meat on one side and the other, it's not going to be a big deal. You can hammer it on, on out. So what we're going to do is we actually are going to start on this end. Uh, we're going to bring this up to heat. We'll split these and actually hammer out the little foot pads uh, for the doorstop. So let's go into the fire and let me get some gloves so I don't set myself on fire. Do remember to be careful with your heat on this piece. Uh, those pieces, those feet are very, very thin and they will melt quickly. So especially if you're using a coal or charcoal forge, uh, mind your temperature. Now pretty much just like every other fork, every other split, we start by, we start by bending one side over. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch both of these. This is not terribly difficult. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and knock the sharp edges off of this piece. There are several ways to go about this. And this is a very awkward piece to get used to working on because you can use the sides of the anvil, you can use the tops of the anvil, it's just uh, awkward. Just want to texture this piece up. And there you go. Real simple. Now we're going to go back into the fire and I'm actually going to mush the pads on here. These little pads are going to be the feet and we'll do them one at a time. Now one of the things I want to encourage you to do, which Jay did not do a lot of, a lot of the original stock that he did had the original factory finish on there. Now, let me throw a couple caveats in here. If you're looking to do the best job that you can, the most attractive looking job, you want to texture everything. You don't want there to be a factory finish on any portion of it. You don't want the smooth, clean lines as it came out of the roller. 
you always want edges and everything to be hammered. It takes a lot more time, but it's far more professional. Now, I'm saying this, if you're doing this to show off, if you're doing this to actually impress somebody, when you're in the shop and you're selling your goods and you kind of go back into the business, this is where you're going to have to kind of concede just a little bit because there is no way to sell a doorstop for 10 or 15 dollars with the time that it requires to do a lot of finishing. Now you may be able to do it with the doorstop, but in general, the time it takes to go in and properly finish it, you're going to have to up your time. And the problem is that somebody's not going to pay $50 for a simple doorstop. Just not going to happen. So as you are becoming a smith and as you maybe even decide to start going to shows, if you're trying to do it to make some money, keep that in mind. So I've got a good heat. Let's go and just spread the foot. Again, nothing complicated. I'm using back side of the hammer just to flatten that tip right there. That's all I'm doing. Let's take one more heat. Second verse, same as the first. And there we have two little spreads right there. We are good to go. Vunde bar. Okay, now you can still see we have our, our other marks here. We're not going to get into those quite yet because what we're going to need to do is actually um, we're going to start down here, heat this guy up, and we're going to fold this guy back over and then go to our other side. All right, I can still see my mark on the side here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold this guy over. Just like this, we'll make sure our arms are still straight. And since this is going to be facing up, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend these guys down a little bit so that it sits just so. Now, we are now done on this end, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the time here, and now since we're going to be working the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead and camp for these edges. and give this whole piece along the shank hammer texture. There we go. I'll cool this in. We'll texture this and you see I still have two marks here. So what I'll do is I'll turn this one up, and again, it's going to be a lot easier for me to demonstrate it to you than explain what we're going to do, but that is actually the catch for the door. It'll come up with this half-inch piece, and then this will fold back, and that will be the ramp the door will catch on. Again, before I do this last process, I'm going to come in and hammer texture. Be sure to break those corners. And now what I'm doing is right here on this edge, just like I did with the feet, I'm going to turkey tail this just a little bit. There we are. I'm going to take one more heat and then we're going to bend this 90 degrees over the edge of the anvil. This is a very quick project. Uh, you have to have a little bit of prep work, but this is a good demo project as well. You just don't want to spend the time to actually split in front of the crowd. Remember, for the majority of demonstrations, you're going to have people's attention for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, the majority. Now, guys, here's, here's the thing. Uh, this is just like the situation with Forged in Fire. Is Forged in Fire everything that we as bladesmiths and craftsmen want? Absolutely not. However, you've got to remember that we are specialists. We find this fascinating. Uh, a lot of the times you have to have a little bit of sensitivity to people that aren't as interested or don't know as much about it to kind of get them to come in. So this is 
one of those situations. You don't have to be perfect in all of it because you're not demonstrating to other smiths. You could tell people that your forge was actually some kind of magnetic resonance chamber and that's what caused the heat. And a lot of them would believe you. I've had people ask me if my fire was real before. So the point is, like I said, do an appropriate demonstration. Uh, don't get hung up on a lot of the super fine details that we as blacksmiths would get hung up on. Okay guys, so what we're going to do is we've turkey tailed that little piece out and now opposite the side of the top, we're going to bend that turkey tail down 90 degrees. Nothing complicated here. You want about a half inch sticking up. That's what you're looking for. And you can see that this mark right here, that is our last mark. So what we'll do is we'll take a heat in this area and we'll begin to fold this over. On the next bend, we are not going to fold this thing completely over. In fact, we're just going to do it at a bit of an angle, at a bit of a ramp, just like a doorstop. So again, this is not an overly complicated piece. It's a lot of measurements and whatnot, but it goes pretty quickly. We've got enough heat here. Yeah, yeah, we're good to go. All right, I find my mark. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can do it just like this if you're looking for a high door, but a cleaner way to do it is to hammer it all the way down, flatten it out so that she looks like that, and then using a pair of pliers or some sort of tool, anything you want to, come back in and simply lift to the appropriate height that you want. Just like that. Now of course guys there's going to be different doors with different heights and I, you know not that I'm telling you to customize every piece for the door but if somebody has an idea you know, you can raise it or lower it a little bit. And if somebody takes it home and it's too tall, uh, I would always set it to be too tall because if their door is shorter than they thought, they can always mash it down a little bit. Uh, it's not difficult to move this, uh, this 3 6 inch or quarter inch steel, you know, just a couple of bumps or just step on it. So, what you're going to end up with is a piece that looks like this right here. You can see that was one of the reasons I, I put these little legs down. So when it sits, it's going to sit flat like that. And that's going to be your doorstop. Now what I'm going to do is take a few moments, clean this guy up, and we'll take a look at her. So here you go, guys. You can see this is not overly complicated. It's very simple. Again, why Jay made so many of these things, I don't know. <laughs> This is one of those odd things I just never saw any real big purpose in, but there you have it. Your own particular doorstop cleaned up. If you're using a power wire brush to do these, uh, let me tell you, be very careful. These things are all kind of grabby grabby. That was in my only complaint with a lot of what Jay did. There are a lot of little arms and stuff to hang off and uh, catch on a power wire wheel, and it will take it away from you and throw it across the room into your face, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So guys, there you have it. There's your doorstop. Quick, simple, easy. Uh, I think Jay back in the day sold these for like 10 bucks. Of course, that was back in the 80s. Uh, but again, it's been nicely textured. It looks good. It looks professional. And of course, now this is the absolute basic way to do this. Uh, you can twist these pieces. You can do all kind of decoration here to the middle. This lends itself to a lot of individuality. In fact, at one point, I used to take these and do them into little curved legs. Uh, you can put eyeballs on it, make it look like an alligator, whatever you want to do. This is the basic form, and so now you have it done. So guys, again, another quick piece of hardware. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, leave it below. Remember, we're growing as a channel, so please, please, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your wife, tell your girlfriend, and I'll see you guys later. Be good.